good evening to all of you i am really honored and delighted i am going to talk yesterday was the earth day so then i thought i should talk about the earth so disruptive innovations for sustainable earth what is sustainability you all know we want good earth biodiversity ecosystems life support good environment and culture and what do we develop life expectancy education equal opportunity for all then create wealth go for bigger production consumption and gdp growth rate society should be happy so what we need climate clean air drinking water hygiene biodiversity then education employment health housing security stabilized population sustained gdp growth higher productivity index this is what we need so how it all these things can come only technology can give the technological innovations can affect the most fundamental changes the ground rules of economic competitiveness and environment resulting sustainable development of the society so what we want in the, the how to apply the technologies in many areas one is food production a green technology for agriculture so now the emerging precision farming using the space technology is going to help us to produce more and also to uh, help the people in employment as well as the creating uh, you know uh, various gadgets like robotic systems for application climate engineering reduction of carbon dioxide in the air then cooling of earth because earth is getting heated up clean energy generation using number of methods particularly solar wind ocean energy green hydrogen these are the things required clean environment you know plastic waste e waste all we have to find use of them so that they can be converted into uh, wealth at uh, different applications green computing liquid waste waste management and so on then green buildings all buildings concrete structures have to be made as a green and helps for health so but we see the earth is like this today very reddish now uh, because of the pollution due to industries then water pollution drying of rivers and so many problems are happening on the earth how do we and over and above the population is going on increasing we see that very soon we will be reaching 8 billion by 2025 and 9 billion by 2043 and 10 billion by 2060 so the population growth is maximum in asia and africa this is africa is steadily growing up so the countries which are declared as poor countries their economic status is not that good there the population increase is much more so and the and if you look at the uh, carbon carbon steadily carbon dioxide is going the concentration is going up it has gone beyond the limit now it has crossed 400 and uh, you see that uh, the uh, limit has been exceeded and very soon earth will look like this if you photograph the earth it is like this today but very soon it will become 2100 you will see the earth like this like mars a uh, humans generates 51 billion tons of carbon dioxide every year when if we we say plant trees why do we say plant trees a tree absorbs 22 kg of carbon dioxide per year and leaves 20 kg of oxygen for living we need to protect forests and we have to plant 40 billion trees we want to save the earth what this carbon dioxide uh, creates the increase in the earth's temperature then uh, the in, in amounts of precipitation increases reduce ice and snow cover it uh, raises the sea level acidity increases and uh, finally you see these changes will impact the food supply water resources infrastructure ecosystem and even our own health and temperature is going up and it is expected that 2 to 4 degree increase by 2100 and what happens already there's a hole ozone hole over antarctica and that uh, because of that the effect is much more ev radiation and ice melting and by 2100 what will happen is all these coastal cities will be flooded 
and the sea water will enter and we have to travel by boats only. So what is the remedy? Remedy is uh, reduce carbon emissions, diversify the energy mix, solar, wind, hydrogen, ocean energy, hydro, nuclear, we have to go and invest in the futuristic technologies, solar power satellites, green hydrogen, helium-3, these are the uh, futuristic things. So the clean energy comes from solar, wind, hydrogen, and ocean. That we will see that later. So what the technology can do for this to find solution? So one is the called nanotechnology. It has come in a big way now. The nanostructural materials, nanofabrication, and nanosystems have come. And what it can do is, this: you, you, we are now going for solar in a big way. In uh, India, we want to generate 100,000 megawatt of solar power. We already reached 60,000. Uh, and what has happened is, all these solar cells are energy inefficient, 12 to 15 percent. So in the, using nanotechnologies, experiments have been done that if you put over the silicon aligned carbon nanotubes, and encapsulate with P3OT polymer, then it goes, the efficiency goes from 15% to 52%. So there is an opportunity for increasing the efficiency of the solar cell. So that's one big advantage we have got with nanotechnology. The other one is you can have film as a solar cell, which will be cheaper and it is going to be uh, very productive for use. Um, light, when the solar light, goes over this thin film. Okay. So when the energy, the light with the high enough energy excites the electrons in the dye molecules, you, and it is covered by the conducting plate called TiO2, titanium dioxide. So they are transported to the cell, and the positive holes left in dye molecules, they create voltage. So you have a plate, total thing, uh, like this, thin plate. It will be a shell like this, thin flip. And you have a dye coated with that. The dye molecules, these, uh, all the dye molecules get excited and they go to, they get in touch with the titanium oxide and generate voltage. So this is a very cheap method of generating the energy. Another big method is you go for solar power satellite. That there are two different satellites are there, one with the reflectors generating the heat energy, and then use the heat to have the steam turbine. That is one way. The other way is you go for the regular with the solar cells, generate the power, electricity, transmit to a remote place by microwave, and then use that for converting to electricity. And what is the use of that? You can create, you can, because you are going for a floating village to get the power. You can, uh, you know, desalinate water, drinking water you can make. So another use of uh, going for the green energy is hydrogen. This is most valuable energy because it's, uh, if you see one kg of hydrogen, it holds 39 kilowatt hour of energy. That is three times as much as your natural gas. So the whole thing, the whole earth is going, moving towards the hydrogen, liquid hydrogen. Hydrogen, there are three hydrogens, gray, blue, and green. These are all emitting carbon dioxide. So the only way to go for green hydrogen, which is, which is you can see the cost-wise, it, it is only $2 per kilogram production of the hydrogen. So how do you get the hydrogen for use? You have got wind, solar, clean energy is available. That you use it, electrolyze, electrolyte, and then create hydrogen from water. Also, you can have air separation plant to have hydrogen. Have hydrogen, nit nitrogen together to make ammonia production, which is anywhere required. Then the ammonia you dissociate and get hydrogen, hydrogen you can get. So this is the one which will be carbon-free hydrogen, which will be used for application. What are the different applications? You know, many, many applications are there, not only for transport, every aspect of use, the hydrogen is useful. So going further into the energy is the fusion energy. 
What we do today is the uh, uh, splitting the uranium. And because we have got the uh, uranium energy, uranium is not available uh, to us. Uh, we get from the nuclear supply group. This uranium is split. Uranium-232 is split. Now, there is another method of doing is the fusion. You fusion the hydrogen to uh, the hydrogen, deuterium, you can fuse. Other new way of doing is helium to deuterium. Now, how do you, what do you do in fusion energy? There are technologies developed by countries, but we have not perfected the technology. So all these countries have joined together, who are doing the fusion energy, they joined together. There are seven nation program, which is going on in Europe. Our country is also contributing. You can see the countries which are contributing, seven nations. And this part, the major structure, vacuum vessels, cryo lines, microwave, all these things are supported by India. So this whole thing you will see in 2025, a 500 megawatt reactor being operational. So that will give the technology to the, these nations, fusion energy. OED1 fusion energy, what is the use? You see the moon, moon has got plenty, millions of tons of helium-3 available. Helium-3 is a non-radioactive material, so which can be, which is amenable for fusion. So we, uh, a robotic system through that, you can mine the material, make it in the tubes and bring it to the earth and use that to generate the energy, fusion energy. Helium-3 with deuterium will generate energy which is 100 times better than uranium. And not only that, it is cheaper. Not only that, it is non-radioactive. So this is the future of that. So 2024 onwards, the Americans are trying to establish a lunar factory. 26, the Russians and Chinese, they are going to have factory and then it will spread. So India may be going in 2030. <clears throat> so the path to clean energy, green energy, which is to save the nation, save the world, save the earth, is solar power technology to increase the efficiency. Second one is large scale grid integration so that we get renewable energy spread available to everyone. Develop energy for storage solutions. This is very important. Storage solutions have to be established and reliability should be available. It should be enhanced. So in the green hydrogen, we have to invest. It's very important. And also ocean. Ocean has got thermal energy. The temperature difference at the top to the bottom is very huge. So you can make use of that to create the thermal energy can be converted into electrical energy. The futuristic is helium-3, which I just now talked to you from moon, and also the solar power satellite. This is about the energy. Now, it is not only that Earth can be saved by what we talk on the ground, but over the Earth, if you see, it is a lot of satellite debris are there. 630 collisions have already taken place between satellite to satellite. 9,900 tons of junk is revolving around the Earth. 130 million pieces of one centimeter parts, which can do a lot of damages. One million 10 centimeter pieces, about 10 centimeter, 36,500 pieces are there. So all these things, collisions, all these things have to be avoided if we want the Earth to be safe. So for that, there's a big uh, uh, radar called Hestag radar, which is monitoring, this is NASA radar, which is monitoring each one of the pieces. And where they are there, the orbit, every detail is available. And but now we have to develop systems which can go and pick up all these debris. So many ideas have come. This is a, a claw which the European has proposed, the net by the uh, NASA has proposed. So there are methods, many methods have come which will see that the debris are removed. So this is a foam spewing spacecraft which can go there and pick up all these uh, debris. There's another thing is called plasma beams, project the beams uh, to uh, remove the junk. Then there's a tracker, the tractor is electrostatic tracker. You've got a satellite which emits the electrostatic charges to the debris. 
and then the, the chunk is uh, removed, it's thrown out and into pieces so that you can, big chunk can be treated like this to make parts. So there are other ways of space dug and uh, deorbiting methods. There are many things we talked. There's one more problem is the asteroids. You know, asteroids, we have to be very, very careful because, you know, 65 million years before, one big asteroid came and hit on the Earth in, near Mexico. It is a, a very long, 10 kilometer long asteroid. And because of the hit, all these pieces, including Dionysus, they died. So these asteroids can create so much of problems. We have to remove these asteroids. So there are methods, asteroids are being monitored. And we're near, we, in January, we have seen six asteroids just passing through the Earth. So using ground-based telescopes, over 26,000 near-Earth asteroids have already been discovered. So we have got methods to remove the asteroids. You can use nuclear energy to split it and move it. You can have sails, solar sails, which can move the asteroids. Or you can have uh, redirect missions. You can have electric propulsion system can be done. Or you can catch them and bring them to other place so that it doesn't hit the Earth. So there are methods we have to do this. Our planet is a lonely speck in this great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. So it is necessary to see, to see how we can protect the earth, save the earth, save the earth from what we are responsible for that and also what the responsible, like asteroids coming, also we have to save. So all these should be saved. So wish you all the best. Thank you.